Tell me something, why do bad things happen to good people? It's a question we've been asking for a long time, of course. In 1981, Harold Kushner, a Jewish rabbi whose teen son had tragically died, published a book. It immediately became a New York Times bestseller. Four million copies were sold. And soon everyone was asking that question, and we still do. Welcome to He Said What, where we try to make sense of Jesus' most alarming words. And so we're going to tackle a big part of that question that has been plaguing us for generations. In fact, it was all the way back in Jesus' time. So have a look at Luke chapter 13. The question, let me put it this way, is simply, why is pain so even unevenly distributed in this world? Why is tragedy so prevalent in one person's life and blessing so prevalent in another's, especially on a global scale? Why is it that we in Orange County are so much better off than other people? Are we holier? Are we uh, better run? These sorts of things. Jesus and his disciples get into the discussion of that question in Luke chapter 13. So I invite you to turn to that uh, this morning. And as we do, I'd like to pray for us. Almighty God, thank you for this opportunity and bless us as we ask questions, questions of you and questions of life. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So Luke chapter 13. And uh, well, let me just say that Jesus and his disciples get to this question the same way you and I often do. Through the local news, there were some things that had happened that uh, the disciples tell Jesus about. Have a look at verse 1. It says, Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans who'd blo whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of that day. He's the same person who judges at, uh, at Jesus' trial later on. And Pilate had decided to dispose of some of his political enemies. And he did that while they were at worship and while they were offering sacrifices, he actually had them killed at that moment. And so their blood, the blood of these men, was mixed with the sacrifices they were offering to God at that moment. It's quite a grisly tale. Jesus... Um, Jesus hears this kind of, hey, did you see what's on the news about today? Did you hear about this? And he asks a question. Actually, he asks a question two different ways. And so look at verses 2 and verses 4. He says, Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? Now to verse 4. Or those 18 who died when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? Jesus amps up the tension level here by saying it's not just about Pilate's evil decision. It's also about a seemingly random situation. A tower that does fine for so many years all of a sudden falls. Why did those 18 people die? when this tower fell on them? And this is a question we all ask because it's human nature, isn't it? Human nature, uh, each one of us, we, we seek after a logical explanation. We demand a rational answer to the question that plagues us, really. And let me describe the question as best I can. Most people are good. They work hard, they deserve a decent life, and still many people don't get the good life they deserve. Why is that? And why is it that other people who seem to be less moral get a better life? Why is there so much inequality in the world today? And it's usually answered in one of two ways. It's answered by the skeptic, and by the believer. The skeptic says, God, if he exists, is unfair. It's God's fault. 
or the universe's fault, or life's fault, or it's the fault of randomness that this happens. It has nothing to do with whether people are good or bad, whether they deserve something or don't. God is not really in existence, and so what, what's going on here is simply randomness. It's not fair, and we just got to deal with it. A believer says, well, God is fair. God is good, and he's just, and we believe that. So, here's what the believer jumps to. Therefore, it's human fault. It's the fault of sin. It's the fault of the person who has made some decision in their life. I've even heard some Christians say, it's because some people just don't have enough faith that they come to this. How do you answer the question? I don't know if you've read Kushner's book from 1981, but let me summarize it for you right now. Kushner began by saying that most of us believe that God is completely good and completely powerful. But we also observe that bad things happen to good people. And since we know that bad things happen to good people, then we have to ask the question about God, what's called the question of theodicy. God is either, therefore, not perfectly good or not all-powerful. It's one or the other. Kushner concludes, after a lot of pages and a lot of emotion, that God is good. And God is not omnipotent. I'll say that again. Kushner concludes that God is good, but he is not all-powerful. He is not omnipotent. And so he is, he, maybe by his own choice or whatever, is powerless to change some of the evil that is in the world. I don't believe that. Let's move on to what Jesus says, shall we? Because it's really right, rather fascinating. Jesus asks that question, you know, do you think that the Galileans were worse sinners than all the rest of us? Do you think the people who had the tower fall on them? Uh, and this is a tower right in Jerusalem, which is where Jesus and his disciples are. By the way, let me just point out, we really struggle with this question when the randomness of life hits us in the face, if you will. When someone who looks like us, sounds like us, behaves like us, has something happen to them that is truly tragic. A person who looks exactly like us has a home break-in and for no particular reason is gunned to death. Someone gets COVID, and they've done all the same thing you and I have done. Someone gets cancer, and you think, what a tragedy. They don't deserve it. How does Jesus respond to this? How does Jesus respond to that question that he puts very directly to the disciples? Why are you alive and they're dead? Jesus says, all the different ways you think of things, that they're greater sinners than you are, you've got it all wrong. It doesn't matter who's sinned more. That's not the issue. And his answer, his full answer, is really total shock. Have a look at verse 2. It's also, uh, excuse me, verse 3. It's also verse 5. He repeats himself after each of the questions he asks. I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. It's a total shock. It's one of his most alarming words. Jesus is asking, were these people worse than the others uh, in the world that are still alive than you? No. Here's Jesus' answer. Amazingly, he says, you all deserve to have a tower fall on you. Every single one of us, 
That's what he's saying. Every single one of you deserve to have this happen to you. It's not that some people, no one deserves it, but it's that everyone deserves it. You and I don't want to believe it. We don't want that to be the case. But what Jesus is saying is every single one of us, you, me, the wisest person in the world today, we are all deserving of judgment that leads to death. We're all deserving of suffering. Now, before you just kind of dismiss that, let's think honestly for a moment about our lives. Think for a moment with me about the many poor choices you've made over your life. I'll do the same. Let's think about the lies we've told. The times we've hurt a friend and yet been forgiven. The stupid, just silly, selfish things that we've done. Did we have consequences for all of those things? We really didn't, did we? You know, I think back to when I was a teenager. And I remember um, I was riding my bike home from church, interestingly enough, but it wasn't a very holy moment. I decided I was going down the hill on my bicycle, and, and the place where I was was quite hilly. And I just wanted to keep the speed. I wanted to have that much speed. And I said to myself, I know it's a blind corner. I know a car could come. I don't care. I'm just going to take the corner. I'm going to enjoy the excitement of turning this corner without ever breaking, without ever looking. Don't know why I said that. It was one of the silly things I did, and I knew it was silly the moment I did it. And nothing happened to me. On a regular old street with plenty of cars and traffic, in a residential area, no car was coming as I took the corner. And then I remember thinking afterwards, why did I make that corner when a buddy of mine just a few days ago was doing something similar and ended up in the hospital? Think of all the poor choices you've made, all of the lies we've told, the times you've heard a friend, the stupid things you've done. We don't have consequences for every one of those situations. There are times when we take the corner full speed just because we want to, knowing it's the wrong thing to do, and a car's not coming, and we just keep on pedaling through life. I've just talked about the sins that we do that we don't suffer consequences for. What about the sins that we do by failing to do something, what theologians call sins of omission. So think with me now about all the times you failed to tell the truth, all the times you lacked the courage to choose a good course of action, all the moments that you had where out of selfishness you decided or I decided to just let things be in our favor. Think of all the times that you could have done something wonderful, but you decided instead to just leave it undone because it was easier that way. Did we have consequences for all those sins of omission? Here's the truth about life. There's nobody listening to my voice today who has received even a fraction of the bad results that we deserve. And God, in his limitless mercy, refrains from giving us what we deserve. That's what mercy means. When you deserve something and you don't get it. That's mercy. And Jesus, out of his love, says something that seems so challenging. He says, take notice. Take notice of those moments. Take notice of the fact that some people get a little more of what they deserve than you do, but that all of us don't get nearly the amount of bad things happening to us that we do deserve. So let's go back to Rabbi Kushner's question. Why do bad things happen to good people? Jesus's response 
is pretty simple, but it's alarming in what it says. There are no good people. Everyone deserves far worse than they get. Ask not the question, therefore, <laughs> why do bad things happen to good people? Here's the question we should be asking. Why do good things happen to bad people? Because that's you and me. Every single one of us deserves far worse than we get. Every single one of us has done things to deserve punishment. So Jesus says, when the tower does not fall, watch out, repent. Because here's the truth. There was only one good person. Why did bad things happen to him? Because he was paying the price for you and for me to have good things happen to us. There's only one answer to the tougher question. Why do good things happen to bad people like you and me? It's because Jesus Christ came. And he wants us to trust completely in him. And never let the circumstances going well in our lives fool us into thinking that we're somehow responsible for all this goodness going on around us. It's not our fault. It's God's grace. It's his mercy. And so we need to depend on him every single day. I hope that helps you today. Come back next week. We'll look at another great passage that will invite us into a little more of understanding why Jesus says some very alarming things to you and to me. God bless you. Have a great week.